Hello, welcome back again. Is the affiliate industry limiting its own growth by ignoring barriers to advertiser investment within the channel? In a session designed to stimulate debate by discussing ideas to improve client experience, remove barriers to entry, and increase transparency, we have got two fantastic people joining us on stage. We do have Slido at the ready. We should have a little bit of time for questions afterwards. So please listen to the session and start popping those questions onto Slido. But in the meantime, please can you welcome to the stage managing partner, affiliates and retail media at Dentsu, Matthew Higgins, and client partnerships director at AWIN, Rosalind Beresford. Go again. Perfect. So, good morning, everybody. Um, today, we wanted to start a conversation uh, to put a spotlight on some of the areas in the industry that we tend to shy away from. So what we're going to cover today won't highlight all of the questions, and we certainly do not have all of the answers, but we want to think about how we can work together to increase investment and make it a better channel for all of us. And before we kick off, we want to do a little bit of audience participation. So there's a couple of statements which are going to come on screen, and just by a simple show of hands, uh, we'd like to know if you've ever said them in your career. So affiliates is transparent. Has anyone ever said that? Yeah, a few people. Affiliates as a channel is simple, or it's easy, or low barrier to entry, something like that. Yeah, a few more. And finally, affiliates is the best value. Oh, lots of hands. Yeah. Well, thank you, Roz, for participating. <laughs> oh, gone too far. Um, thank you, Roz, for participating. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm here to tell you that you're all wrong. So, sorry about that. Um, you might be wondering who we are uh, and why we're here and why we're telling you uh, that you are wrong. Uh, so, my name is Matt Higgins. I'm managing partner of uh, uh, Dentsu uh, for affiliates and retail media. I've been in the industry now for just over a decade. Uh, when I first started, I didn't even know what cashback was, let alone that I'd blindly stumbled into um, blindly stumbled into a channel that I remain so passionate about uh, 10 years on. I'm Ros Beresford, Client Partnerships Director at AWIN UK, and I'm a bit of an industry lifer, so I find it quite difficult to hear that those statements might not be true. I've actually worked in the channel since 2005, when I was a fresh-faced graduate, and I predominantly worked in client-facing roles. So I'm probably the definition of how insular this industry can be. I've made some of my best friends through the industry, which I can see here today, which is brilliant. I've met my husband through the industry. I'm very glad that he is not. But I spend a lot of time both inside and outside of work talking to people who are similarly passionate about the channel. So all good presentations have uh, facts and figures, right? So here are ours. From the latest IAB ad spend report, digital advertising in the UK ad spend uh, was nearly at 23.5 billion. The paid search ad spend was around 11.6 billion. Uh, and affiliates came, comes in at a lowly uh, 793 million. Now, there's also something in the world of programmatic uh, called the unknown delta which is about 15% of uh, spend within programmatic. And quite simply, that's just money that nobody knows what that's going on. Uh, a couple of years ago, that was reported to be around 830 million. So that will show you that there's no shortage of ad spend uh, within the digital industry. So as it's such a fantastic channel, why are we maybe struggling to get the investment that we would like? We think it can be that we can be quite defensive as a channel, probably because we're so passionate about it. We might get asked a challenging question and we might shut that down, as opposed to opening up the conversations to see what we could do better. The affiliate channel has actually been around for about 30 years, and the web itself has only been around for about 33. So we're one of the most established channels out there. So 
back in the early days, there might have been a bit of bad press, but that's way behind us. And I think the channel's in the best position that it's ever been in. So what can we do to maybe work out some of these positive solutions? The bad artists imitate, but the great artists steal. So when advertisers place any digital marketing spend, they have a decision to make. Do they place it in the affiliate channel, or do they place it elsewhere? So it's really other channels that are our main competition, but I think the affiliate industry can really be quite competitive within ourselves. So what can we learn from them, and how can we get spend away from some of the big giants like Google and Meta and into the hands of independent publishers? Another way of looking at it is, do we have a bit of an industry identity problem? And I don't mean whether we call ourselves affiliates or partnerships. That can just be a bit of a distraction and, and beside this point. I'm currently studying for my MBA. And I've been digging out the old marketing textbooks. And there was a paper from Levitt in the 1960s which talked about the demise of the railroads in the US. Bear with me. This is relevant, I promise. He said that the railroads declined not because of things like cars and planes and telephones that came up and met client needs, but because the railroads themselves did not meet those needs. And he went further to say, is that because the railroads were far too insular? They just defined themselves as the railroad industry when they should have been defining themselves as the much broader transportation industry. So do we have the same problem with an affiliate? So we too insular, just thinking of ourselves as the affiliate channel, and we're missing the point that we're actually part of the bigger digital marketing industry. And today we wanted to start a conversation. So in the spirit of that, we'd invite you all to use the Slido app uh, and submit challenges that you think are in the industry or any solutions that you already think might exist uh, to solve some of the problems that we have. Uh, I'd also like to point out that I was being purposefully dismissive uh, by telling you all that you were wrong. Uh, that was basically to incite a reaction or, or a feeling. Uh, but we're going to revisit um, the statements which we had uh, right at the beginning. So affiliate is transparent, simple, or best value. Uh, and we'll start off with transparency. So don't get me wrong. Some parts of the affiliate model are absolutely transparent, like 100%. And we're miles ahead of some of the other channels when it comes to things like fraudulent numbers in terms of traffic uh, and impression views. Um, by bots. But when I think about transparency, I think more about data and performance transparency. Uh, and there seems to be a real gap uh, in our channel uh, comparatively to the other channels that we work with. If I run an email campaign uh, through lead gen, for example, I will have access to the send size, the audience, uh, the open rate, the click-through rate, the conversion rate. Um, I will also be able to do A-B testing uh, off the back of that and be able to optimize accordingly messaging uh, and performance. If I work with Google on PPC, I get the data right down to keyword level so I know whether a keyword is specifically performing and whether or not I need to maybe change the copy or add extensions. When I look at paid social, it's exactly the same thing. I can A-B test. I can look at uh, specific uh, creatives. And that kind of creates a little bit of a gray area uh, in the affiliate model, because quite often we really struggle to get simple things like uh, email metrics, open rates, send sizes, uh, and just general like impression figures uh, on our activity. Now, there might be an argument to say that that's because of the payment model. The payment model is a CPA, and therefore we should only really con concern ourselves with uh, the actual final sales performance. But that changes when we start to do fixed fee tenancies. And we're trying to encourage people to invest money, um, in both money, time, and effort, into actually uh, running a campaign. But they don't necessarily know the metrics um, around it. There might be an argument to say that this could reduce investment as well within the channel, because some of these placements might not work. But that's the challenge, right? That's why we're marketers. Like, If something's not working, we should try and fix it. We should make it work. If you have a keyword within your paid search campaign that isn't performing, you don't stop investing in paid search. You see how you can make that work. You might change copy. You might add images. You might just have a completely different approach to it altogether. Google, uh, Facebook, and Amazon uh, all do this very, very well. One thing that they are very transparent with is the data needed and required by clients to actually make marketing decisions and intelligent optimizations. 
So when I hear some of that feedback, I think it's quite interesting. And I think the first reaction might be, is, well, why, why do publishers not give us this data? What are they trying to hide? But I've actually got a potential sort of different answer to this, which is one of capability. So Matt and myself were at a round table last week with um, other heads of agencies from across the channel. And we posed this question generally, how can we get more investment in the channel? Uh, it was great. We've got loads of ideas for what we could talk about today. But one of the people there had previously worked publisher side. And they gave an example of previously an advertiser through a certain network coming to them and saying, oh, can we have this data? Can we have click trackers put within the placement links so we can see specifically how this piece of activity performed? They said, no problem. Let me go to the tech team. We'll work that out. And it wasn't possible because the way that their website was, was structured, how their back catalog worked, the automation of the links, it just wasn't built in that way. And it would be possible to change it, but it would be a big change. So when you just have one advertiser working through one network, asking for that type of data, it's never going to get prioritized. And this was an example from a big international publisher. So when you think of all the hundreds of thousands of publishers that work across the activity, you can see how it's difficult for this to, to scale and get there. But that doesn't mean that we, we can't find this solution. And for me, there's maybe two things that we need to do. The first one is just to be really clear with the industry, with publishers, about why we want this data and how it should actually increase spend when we can prove and understand which of the placements work best. And the second thing is how can we work together across networks and different platforms to standardize the ways that the publishers can give us this information to make it as easy as possible to be scaled and automated. I guess the, the other final point to note on this one for me is around attribution data. And this doesn't specifically answer that question of exact placements and how they're performing, but it does give so much more information that advertisers can use to help make really strategic placements decisions. At AWIN, we use single view, but there's other platforms out there. And one of the big questions that advertisers always ask us when they're using the technology is how are my tenancies performing? Not just how are they impacting last click, but how are they looking on a reattributed basis? How are they impacting other publishers? And how are they impacting other channels as well? So having better data is definitely going to help make better placement decisions and hopefully increase investment. So moving on to the next one then, we had affiliates is simple. There's so much that we have done over particularly, I think, the past five years as an industry to really tackle this point and particularly focused at SMEs. So we have the A1 Access product, but again, other networks are also operating in this space looking at how we can make it really quick and simple to sign up. So things like integrations with the big platforms like Shopify and Magenta, having much easier contracting, really good price points, introductions to the main publishers. There's so much that we have done. But I think that's probably, again, a bit of an insular view where we're looking at how much we've improved as an industry and aren't making that comparison to what SMEs need to do to sign up to other channels. So Matt was sharing with me that it takes a, an SME minutes to set up a business account on Instagram and get up and running, and we're definitely not there yet. So it'd be great to see how we can move forward and think about the different things that we can do to really take this journey that we're on one step further. The second side of this for me is, I suppose, a bit more of a conceptual one, which is this idea that the affiliate channel is decentralized. And to me, this is the biggest benefit of the channel. The fact that you don't have a single owner like, like Google or Meta making control. Advertisers can form mutually beneficial partnerships with loads of different types of publishers and decide their own payment metrics. Publishers are sitting at different ends of the funnel. But unfortunately, that means that, therefore, you're moving away from this idea that affiliates is simple. And it's probably going to get more and more complex because there's so many more types of partners coming into the channel, which on one side is fantastic. That's what we want to see. But when you think about how influencers work, how brand partners, how technology partners, they all probably work on different metrics, sitting at different places in the funnel. And again, it's just going to get potentially even more complex to manage them. Roz mentioned there about the contractual, uh, you know, contractual process and how it is a little bit clunky, I suppose. For us, it's not quite as streamlined as the likes of Meta or Google, which are essentially a tick box. They're undeviating. Um, they're probably overcomplicated, which is why many people don't read them and just click OK and carry on. Um, but it is a simple, easy access uh, contractual process to actually start ad advertising um, with Meta. And we're not quite at that plug and play uh, stage yet within uh, the channel's life cycle. 
Uh, a few years ago, there was much more talk in the affiliate channel around uh, blockchain contracts and blockchain networks. And maybe that will unlock the solution uh, at some point, uh, but maybe it won't. But it's definitely something that we need to think about addressing. With regards to technical integration as well, at the moment, this is still a really resource heavy um, area of, of a program, of a setup. Uh, not, both, not just for publishers and clients, but also for agencies and, and the networks as well. Now, I know some networks have been doing a lot of work. AWIM, for example, uh, have access to a Shopify plugin, uh, which really helps uh, the integration. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the contract bit is still outside of yeah. that. So you still need to go through uh, the contractual um, element. But I think my thoughts around the idea that affiliates is simple is slightly more of a preventative one rather than a cure, which is we should just be honest. Affiliates isn't simple. It's complicated. It's a difficult channel to navigate. And that's why we're all here. That's why everyone's in this room, because it requires a level of specialism and understanding to actually get the most out of the channel um, that isn't just easy to come by. It can be so complicated with the legal side, the tech side, the relationship building side, and you know, planning uh, activities and campaigns, thinking about investments. That doesn't sound like a simple channel to me. And I think the key thing for me is understanding uh, and making sure that we, we almost stop underselling ourselves to people and underselling um, you know, how difficult it actually is uh, as a channel to manage and navigate. That's why we all have jobs, right? Is because it's hard to do. Um, and I think that's the main thing, is we need to be more open, more honest, that actually it's not just as simple uh, as a plug and play. And the reason that simplicity is so important is because something that I've mentioned maybe a couple of times, uh, but it's about time. Uh, as we all know, the old adage, time is money. Uh, and time is extremely valuable uh, to everyone, everyone in the room, uh, and also our clients. So as if by the perfect segue, uh, affiliates is the best value. Now, for me, and I suppose for a lot of clients that I work with and accounts that I've worked on in, in the last 10 years, uh, value goes beyond the forecasted numbers. So within the IAB over the last 10 years, you would have seen various things around uh, the ROI, from £11 per pound spend up to maybe £16 uh, per pound spend. But where we lose and where we seem to struggle demonstrating our value in the channel is A, that access to information, which I mentioned uh, in transparency, but also the sheer amount of time that it takes to actually manage an affiliate program and an affiliate channel. So here's just a super, super quick example. I'm sure we've all had a similar example to this. But a client will come to us, uh, and they will say, I have uh, 50,000 pounds that I want to spend over Christmas. This is above and beyond your normal BAU activity. They brief it out to all of the channels. Paid search goes away. They look at their keyword lists. They pull some reports and SQRs, and they come back and say, yeah, we can do that. We can expand the keyword list, or we can increase our impression share, and we will spend 50,000 pounds in December. Paid social will go away. Maybe they'll think about audiences. Maybe they'll say we can test some more creative. But again, they will come back and say, yeah, absolutely. We will spend 50,000 pounds in December. In affiliates, as I'm sure many of you are aware, you go away, you speak to 5, 10, 15 different publishers. That takes time. They come back with five or six options each. You have to decipher what's best for the client and what's best for the activity that you want to do. You're lacking a forecast because affiliates, quite rightly so at times, are very tentative about being held to numbers. So maybe you can get some historic data there uh, as well. Eventually, what ends up happening is that in itself, that planning takes up a lot of time. Skip forward to the campaign actually being run. You hit your 50,000 pounds milestone for the Q4, but unfortunately, after validation, you've only spent 40,000. And that's no good to a client, because next year, they're, when they're pitching for more budget, and they're pitching for more budget for Christmas, they're going to look at the numbers and say, well, you only spent 40,000 last year, not 50. So there becomes a restriction there. And then going on further after that, operationally, at the end of December, paid search will get an invoice, and they will put that one line on the billing, attribute the PO to the extra activity, and they will send, and they will send that out to the client. 
With affiliates, you may have been paying activity from November tenancies, November tenancies in December. You've got a two month maybe validation cycle on a particular activity. You're trying to segment those sales out and above and beyond the BAU activity. And then you have to put all of this into an operational model that simply it doesn't fit. And you, we see by the numbers at the very beginning that actually affiliates accounts for a very small amount of media spend, <coughs> probably around three to 5%. So what you're actually asking a business is, can you have a bespoke operation specifically for 3% of your marketing spend? And that's where we start to lose our value. Banking on a good ROI is no longer enough for the affiliate channel. I think taking that ROI point further, for me, I think it can be difficult to compare the channels to others because we're not comparing apples for apples or the same thing. In my experience, for example, CPM activity is hardly ever spoken about in the channel. It's certainly something that's not regularly tracked or reported on. And actually, I think we can sell that. Um, we often do sell that. We say, you know, look at all these, in fact, fantastic impressions that you're getting, but you're only paying on this last click basis. And I think that's where it comes to this point that are we underselling ourselves, particularly as the channel expands, there's so many new publisher types that sit higher up the funnel that we want to bring through. I think this idea of hidden costs in the channel is a really important one. They're not hidden to advertisers, so it's important that they're not hidden for the whole industry as well. And one of the things that we do within my department in client partnerships is we have conversations with senior members of our clients' organizations. So I mentioned those are a bit further removed from the affiliate channel, but to ask them about what are their expectations for it and what do they see the barriers being? Is it because they need a team to manage it? Is it because they don't have the data? And more often than not, it can just be a lack of education and awareness about all the opportunities that exist. We actually did some research uh, before today to have a look at two different types of advertisers. We called one the adventurous advertisers, and they were the ones that were really active in finding different types of partnerships to work with all across the funnel, doing quite a bit of tenancy activity higher up as well as the ones that sit more towards conversion. And then we had the armchair advertisers that were a bit less adventurous, really focused on the more traditional publisher types. We found that the adventurous advertisers saw double the growth of those that were actually more focused on the last click converting ones. So it just shows that even though the ROI there might be slightly reduced, actually overall there's still fantastic benefits to be had even on a last click sales basis. I think another answer to this question is, well, affiliates should be out of a cost of sale budget. It shouldn't be out of a marketing budget. We shouldn't be trying to fit in into the systems that Matt mentions, but I think that can be a bit of an impractical solution, and one that you know, with my team, we might talk to people about, but you really need to be up there with the big CFOs of brands to really have that type of conversation. So whilst, yes, that would be nice, and it makes sense, it doesn't make sense for tenancy, and it's something that's going to be quite hard to change. So we've probably been quite negative today, um, and I, there's a lot of good things in the channel, right? There's still some great things in the channel. And that's why both myself and Roz are so passionate about it, because we see a huge amount of untapped potential. So I'm just going to quickly recap, and I'm, I'm sure I'm preaching to the choir here, but the reason the channel is so strong, simply because there's a validation process that doesn't exist in the same way uh, in any other channel. The payment model gives you exceptional control over the return on your ad spend. Technology incubation, like you only need to walk around the floor today to see some great technologies uh, and affiliates has a history uh, in sparking innovation. And then reach and breadth. Affiliates was the only channel that could target through, uh, through the COVID period really specifically key workers, who, the likes of Blue Light Card and NHS discounts and things like that. And that is a supreme strength uh, of the channel. So we see self-reflection as the origin of growth. And what me and Roz have been talking about is if we continue to have the same conversations, be defensive in the same way, can we really expect change? Can we expect clients and people to start investing more if we're not actually addressing issues, but we're just being defensive about them? We, there's a huge and huge amount uh, of untapped potential. And sometimes I think we are far too focused on trying to steal spend from each other like whether that's top cashback, trying to get money out of the guys instead of spending on Quidco, that really we should be looking at how do we get money? How do we still spend from Facebook? Let's take what they're doing really well. Let's take what Google are doing really well. 
and let's make our channel better. And concluding that and being open, I think we've got a couple of minutes, but we're going to uh, go to Slido now, I think, and see if anyone has uh, submitted anything whilst we've been talking. Thank you very much. We do have a few questions. You did ask for a problem. And one of the problems here is how can affiliates ever be transparent when larger publishers mask the URLs through redirects? I, I, can, I can jump on that. I've got <laughs> a lot of opinions. Um, I, think, I think this is a conversation that needs to be had within the publishers because ultimately they're the gatekeepers of data. As Roz mentioned, there's no centralization. AWIN don't hold that data. Um, but I think really the key is just trying to highlight actually how important that is to a client to actually get that information. It's like with anything, if we can prove that there's a value there, then I'm sure we can, we can start to change things. So if we're saying to a client, actually, if you can give us the email data for that, that means that over the course of the quarter, we're going to spend X amount more money with you because of these optimizations and because of these things that we can do. So again, it's about starting the conversation. That's my opinion. It might not be the right one. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about talking to the publishers. Um, another question here. So there's two sort of similar ones, and you did touch on it a little bit earlier. Um, is the perception that CPA is the only affiliate payment an actual barrier to entry? It's known as the easy performance channel, less prestigious than perhaps other channels. And there's another question asking about value representation due to the last click model. Yeah. Um, kind of both together, and maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think we can undersell ourselves because it's, I mean, ROI is so strong. And I think the CPA has been kind of what's defined the channel for such a long time. It's sort of what we go to and how we use the narrative of that when we, we talk to advertisers about joining the channel. But it is underselling all the other types of activity that can sit in the channel. And um, can mean that maybe advertisers are less likely to, to put more risk, I suppose, in upper funnel activity and place those tenancy placements because they need it to deliver a certain way to, to dive into their mix. So I think that's a really good point. Yeah. Amazing. And are you asked, are you, do you think a lot more channels are going to dive into this partnership space? Is the do are the doors now open? Sorry? I said the more channels now going to shift into this space. Is the door now yeah. open? I mean, I think we are definitely seeing the, the boundaries really blurring of what is affiliates, what's partnerships, what's elsewhere. It's, you know, it used to be CPA, now it's so much more. And there's, I think it's such a, an easy mechanism to use to have that transparency that I, I'm really excited about what the future holds. Amazing. I think there's just on that point as well, there's a, a definite increase in focus of the affiliate channel. I mean, it's, it's gaining traction um, throughout. Um, but yeah, it's, we're still going to hit these stumbling blocks, I think, if you know, we can't get access to the data, if we can't make it simple, if we can't, you know, all of these bits that we've spoken about today, like we can really turbocharge new brands coming into, into the channel. Um, but we're kind of, yeah, we're, we're our own victims. We're our own worst enemies but fabulous enemies at the same time. <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Can you please put your hands together for Matthew and Rosalind? <laughs>